This video is gonna be about uh, replacing the axle boot on Rockwell two and a half ton axles. You have to take out all these bolts and then we'll undo the bearing, pull that out, the hub, and then we can do the shaft and we'll go step by step. So now with the uh, outer cap off, we got the large axle nut, this is the jam nut. There's a locking tab ring in between the two. You have to just pry this up and then we can remove this nut. Remove the locking tab ring and then we can remove the bearing nut on the inside. There's two sets of these. So now just loosen the axle nut, the uh, jam nut, and we can turn that off and we'll probably use channel locks. All right, so we're taking this outer nut off and the locking ring I was talking about is right here. Put that down for a sec. So this is this little locking tab, you can see some sides are notched in to grab on the ring, to grab on the uh, large nut, bearing nut. So now we got both the uh, jam nuts off the bearing there, we can just pull this, push it back on, and uh, grab the bearing here on the outside. You got your seal, only goes one way. Like that on the inside. And uh, the bearing only goes one way. Tapered side in. Now we'll uh, pull the whole hub off. Okay, so we've pulled the hub off. Um, you can see the inside bearing, you can leave that. Now we're gonna undo all these outer bolts and this hollow shaft is gonna slide off of the axle shaft then we could take out the axle shaft. All right, so we got the bolts out there. Just uh, pull that out, slide that off. That's how that comes off. Stand that up there. But anyways, we got to touch the shaft, so. And now we can kind of see, get this. We got any play in our shaft there, in the U-joints. Seems okay. It just slides out. I'm gonna have to put the uh, phone down and uh, pull this out. We'll be back. Okay, so the shaft's out now. All the hubs and everything. The uh, drive shaft's out. And uh, looks like it's been leaking for a minute. It's full of chite. So we're gonna pull off the. Uh, um, tie rod bolts will undo the top four bolts and there's four bolts down low we're gonna undo that as well as undo the clamp screw all right so we got the uh, bolts off the top plate there's two parts to this plate the top piece which is the outer with the grease nipple we'll put that down to the side and this top piece you can just kind of pull it out and I believe See how it slides in there? That they are marked. Let me find it. Should be marked. Yeah, yeah. See right there, it says top on the outside of it. This is, you know, it's the uh, top plate, the top of the knuckle. And the uh, lower plate is stamped, lower or bottom. Here's the uh, bottom plate. See it stamped bottom and that goes in up like that so now that we got the uh, top plate off and the bottom plate off and the tie rod bolt out we can now lift the knuckle up and over the top get it centered hang on one second kind of hard with one hand here there we are so it's just gonna slip up and over the top I just had you there we are, up and over the top. Now we can grab it. Take it off the bottom, and that's it. Set this to the side. Covered in grease. Very good. Okay. So now we have the culprit, the clamp that fell off on the inside. It looks like it's bent. Yeah, 
tuck tabs here aren't really square. So I have another one in the garage. I guess we'll replace the whole boot and clean all this shit up in here. Regrease it, and I'll show you how to put the uh, new boots on the tricks that uh, Rockwell Off Road showed on uh, YouTube. This is just a little bit more detailed video for uh, any first timers. All right, so we got most of the uh, old grease out from the inside. Now the uh, main part about this is this ridge that the band sits in, the inside band. It has to be spotless because you don't want any oil, any grease in there. Because if there is, you run the risk of it falling off again and you're back to square one. So make sure it's nice and clean and I'll show you the uh, boot install next. Well, if you've gotten this far, you probably don't even to show you this, but anyways, here's the uh, new seal that I'm putting on. This is the inside, the outside. These uh, little cutouts here, one here, one here, I put them this way, not up and down, but side to side. Um, from the wheel, I'll show you that. Here's the uh, outside band clamp and the uh, inside band clamp. All right, so we got the uh, inside clamp on, uh, all tightened up there. One thing that I do really like to do is to really force pull on the uh, boot, make sure she's not going to fall off. And then uh, when I get the knuckle back on the outside clamp onto the knuckle, which is a trick, unless you have four guys or four hands rather, two guys and four hands, you ain't getting it on. So I will show you the trick and uh, where you can do it by yourself. Yeah. All right, so here's the trick. A little uh, wood clamp, whatever you call them, seat clamps, wood clamps. On the back side, we're just gonna place it on. Make sure your band is in between the ribs because you can't get it on afterwards to get it around. Now, I'm not saying this works perfectly every time. It may take you a few times, but you will get it. Um, now we can start slowly working around the top and the bottom until it's all on. You're gonna have to hold it It's gonna want to come off and then put the band on and start tightening it up It still could use four hands, but you can do it with two All right, so I was able to do this one shot um, within three minutes. It's actually my best time yet So it's all in the groove there all the way around yada yada make sure it's all good there um, one little trick I did find out um doing this before is you see i got a little piece of paper towel there when you put this on it tends to want to be all cockeyed don't put it like that because it tends to fall down and then it slips off and you're like fuck i gotta do it again put it lying down so it's resting on it so it doesn't have anywhere to twist to and that paper towel is for any grease because these aren't uh they're smooth texture they're not uh dimpled or anything for extra traction so i'll put the paper towel in between on the metal side the rubber you're not really going to damage it this is pretty heavy duty rubber all right so now we're going to give it the old twist test here might just fucking really give her give her give her lock to lock you know in and out and has it fallen off no She's all good. It's not falling off. Good beans. Just a little uh, advice. If you do switch up the top and bottom plates by accident, you didn't watch the video correctly, or you, uh, something went wrong, and then you put it back together and your steering knuckle isn't free like this, like you should just be able to push it with one hand and it wiggle and flop like a flounder. But if it's all stiff and everything, and it's hard and it's not locking up and everything, check your plates because I have ran into that before and that will be the uh, little tip of the uh, minute. All right guys, so I showed you putting the knuckles on the top plates. Um, what I torque these top ones and the bottom ones to is FT. Can't figure that out. The torque's back there, uh, the last one. <laughs> then we, uh, so this is the uh, drive shaft here, the uh, splines of it on the outside that uh, slide the drive shaft in. Then you can put your top ring out with your uh, little hub there in the bearing. Bolt all that up. And then uh, we'll put the uh, knuckle on over top. Torque the bearings. The bearings aren't torqued to FT. 
All right, so the uh, hub is back on, the bearing's on, the lock ring's on, the locking ring is on. Now we'll put the uh, cap back on, bolt that up, put the tire on, ready for a road test. That's about it, guys.